Good afternoon, Facebook. Jesse here. I want to share a short message with you that is on my heart. Um, I want to talk to you today about the paradox of the Christian life. What is a paradox? A paradox is two things that seem to contradict, but somehow they actually work together. A paradox is something almost like a mystery. And we see in the Christian life a lot of upside down thinking. Thinking the way of Christ is not the way of the world, right? Jesus said, humble yourself and you'll be lifted up. Jesus said, the poor in spirit are really those who inherit the earth. The meek are those who inherit the earth, right? It says that the peacemakers are the sons of God. In a world that's fighting, a, com a conflicting world, a world that says, you know, put others down, Jesus says, be a peacemaker, and then you'll be a son of God. You see, you can see that in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. You see that Jesus, he thinks the opposite of the way the world thinks. And here's a paradox that I found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 about these two things. They seem to be opposite, but they're not. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, starting in verse uh, uh, starting in verse 7 through uh, 9. So in this passage, Paul is talking about how he is a true disciple of Christ. And the evidence of his true discipleship is not in all of the ministry success. It's actually in his suffering with hope. You see, that was what proved that he was a true apostle, a true disciple, was uh, his resume of suffering. And so he says this. He says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power sorry my bible's uh, spinning that the excellence of power may be of god and not of us we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed you see in this passage he says many powerful things he says we're hard pressed but we're not crushed you see the pattern in this passage he says we're this but we're not this. We're hard pressed. We're feeling like we're being squeezed by life. We're being persecuted. We're hard pressed. But then he says, we're not crushed, but I'm not crushed. You see, you might feel like you're hard pressed in life. You might feel like the pressure's caving in with trials that are around you. But guess what? If you have hope in God, you're not crushed. Then he says, we're perplexed. The word perplexed means to be confused, to be disturbed, to be uh, baffled. He says, we're perplexed but we're not driven to despair. Despair is a word that means you lost your hope. Paul says that he's perplexed, he's confused, but he's not driven to a place of despair just yet. And then he says this, we're persecuted, but not forsaken. See, he says, I'm feeling persecuted. I'm being persecuted on every side, but guess what? I'm not forsaken because God says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And then he says, we're struck down but not destroyed. And then we go into um, chapter six and he says something very similar, um, continuing with the, the paradox here. Um, he's talking about his suffering again. And he says this, ready? Um, verse eight, by dishonor, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. You see, in this, it seems like opposite. How can you be poor yet make many rich? How can you be sorrowful yet always rejoicing? How can you have nothing yet possess everything? How can you be as unknown, but yet well-known? How can you be seen as a deceiver, but yet true? These things are opposite. And it's very similar to what he says in 2 Corinthians 4. He's saying this powerful statement that the world is viewing him as an imposter. You see, people called Paul a false teacher. Um, Paul was isolated a lot. Paul was suffering, the apostle Paul. But he said, from God's perspective, you know what? God views me in a different way than the world views me. And I love that. You see, he says this, right? He says, we're seen as deceivers, yet we're true. He was preaching the truth. He was preaching the truth of God's word. He was unknown by man. Man rejected him. Man abandoned him. Yet he was known by God. He knew the Father. 
Jesus Christ died for his sins and rose again that he might be fully known by God, right? Um, he was seen as a deceiver. People called Paul a deceiver, yet he was speaking the truth of God's word. He said, we're dying, yet behold, we live. That's why the Bible says to live is Christ, to die is gain. People saw Paul as constantly dying, right? Paul was dying to his flesh, but in that death, he was truly alive. You see, that's the paradox, right? He says, we're sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. How can rejoicing and sorrow go together from a worldly perspective? How can you have hope in a worldly perspective? You can only have hope that your circumstances will get better. But as a believer, you have hope in heaven. You have hope in God who will never fail, right? How can you be poor yet make many rich? Well, what Paul is saying is he's poor physically, but spiritually he was offering encouragement, offering the word of God, offering blessing and hope to others. Yet he was poor physically, yet making others rich spiritually. Paul said, having nothing yet possessing everything. Paul said, you know, I, I have nothing. Right? There was times where he was in prison. There was times where he, he was, you know, he lost everything. Paul said, I know how to be content in all things. I know how to abound and I know how to be brought low. He was suffering plenty and hunger. Yet he said he possessed everything. He had nothing physically, but spiritually he possessed the world. He possessed Christ. He possessed all things given to him for life and godliness. You see, this is the paradox that as a believer, from a worldly perspective, we are, we are a spectacle unto men. We are peculiar people. Yet through the lens of Christ and through the eyes of Christ, when we have hope in our suffering, it's the paradox of the Christian life. We die to live. We rejoice in sorrow. We are exalted when we're humbled. We have nothing, yet we possess everything. We're seen as imposters, yet we're true. All these things. We're sorrowful, yet we're always rejoicing. And you see, the Word of God tells us that God views things differently than the world views things. That's why in Isaiah 55, God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You see, I want to challenge you to view yourself in light of God's perspective today. I want you to see the paradox of the Christian life. And I want you to have hope no matter what suffering you're going through. Because we can always hope in God. God will never let you down. God is faithful to every promise. His word is true. We can trust him today, saints of God. God bless you.